Good morning and welcome to Strength for Today. And it's me this week, as you might have guessed. And uh, we're looking this week at a centurion's faith. We want to have a look at this great centurion's faith in Matthew chapter 8. And our aim this week is to build up your faith. And when David Robinson was on the other Sunday, he said, before we pray for healing, he says, I want to tell some stories uh, of faith of how people have reached out in faith and increase the faith of those who are listening before we pray for healing. And it's so true. Uh, when we want to get, see great things done by God uh, and we want to increase our faith, it's good to hear the stories of other people's faith and that builds us up. And I want to look at day one uh, at this centurion. He had different types of faith, but the first one I want to look at, he had a radical faith. We're going to read just some of the verses uh, from Matthew 8, starting at verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came to him a certain centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus says to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Down to verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Verse 13. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so be it done to you. And his servant was healed, the self same hour. Radical faith. Here was a man, and Jesus, he came and asked Jesus to heal his servant. And Jesus says, I will come and heal him. And this man says, no, no, wait, Lord, you don't need to come. I'm willing to believe that if you just speak the word here and now, it will be done. You know, elsewhere, Jesus said that, you know, except you see, you will not believe. But here is a man who was prepared to believe, even though he didn't see. He says, Lord, your word is good enough for me. As long as you say it, I believe it. And folks, that is simple faith, simple childlike faith, as we'll see also later on in the week. But I want to look at this aspect of radical faith. Um, here was a man who didn't uh, go with the normal, didn't go with the flow. Nine out of ten people would have said, OK, Lord, you said that you're going to heal him. Uh, come on down and I'll go with you. And they uh, will walk down together and go to the servant and you heal him while I'm watching. But no, this man was radical. He says, Lord, speak the word. And I know that my servant will be healed. Radical faith. You know, throughout the Bible, uh, many people displayed radical faith. Uh, we think of um, the lady who touched the hem of Jesus' garment. She went through the crowd. She wasn't meant to be there. Uh, she had a disease where she should have been uh, staying away from people. And she would have been scorned. And there's no reason she could have got near Jesus. But she had radical faith. And she went through with it, with it until she got the blessing. You think of Peter. You know, Peter, when he stepped out to walk on the water, that was radical faith. Now you say, huh, but he fell afterwards and he sunk. But at least he had radical faith to start with. And, you know, God can work with that. God can work with our mistakes. Sometimes we step out in faith and we make mistakes. God can work at, at that as long as we take the step and don't stay in the boat. Radical faith. You know, Hebrews 11, the great chapter of faith, tells us of great um, men and women of faith. And it says they've uh, subdued kingdoms through faith, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lands, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. Radical faith eh, of men and women who dared eh, to believe God. If you think of the missionaries, um, the pioneers like David Livingstone, imagine if he never had radical faith. Imagine if he said, huh, you know, it's too hard to go out to Africa. There's too much I have to give up. You know, how can I get the money when I go there? What if they kill me? You know, I've never been to Africa before. You know, 
in human reasoning, he would have been right to say no. But he had radical faith. He had a vision. And he could see those people uh, uh, being brought the word of God. He could see that by faith. And he stepped out in radical faith. When we think of Elam, uh, our, the early pioneers of Elam uh, were men and women of radical faith. They blazed a trail of the gospel around the UK and Ireland. And they preached uh, the word of God without fear or favour. And they dared to lay hands on people and, and to believe that they would be healed. And they were healed. And you can read about those stories. They're well documented. They had radical faith. God give us that radical faith again. You know, sometimes we're content with just faith. God give us ra radical faith. Jesus talked about different types of faith. He said to the disciples one time, he said, have you no faith? This morning we read where Jesus says, oh, you have little faith, but here is a man with great faith. Which category do you want to be in? No faith, little faith or great faith? I want to be in that category of radical faith. You know, um, I want to finish with a story which I've maybe told you before, but it's worth telling again. There's a man called Blondin. Uh, and years and years ago and he used to walk across the Niagara on a tightrope and the crowds and crowds came to watch him do this and you know he crossed over he crossed back again then he would do a few stunts he'd go over then later with a wheelbarrow and wheel it back again and everybody cheered him and they shouted Blondine 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 and he hushed the crowd and he says who believes that the great Blondine can wheel a man over in this wheelbarrow across the rope. Not just the wheelbarrow, but someone inside it. And they said, we believe, we believe, we believe. Blondine, Blondine. And they shouted his name. And then he said, who's going to be that person? <laughs> the crowd went quiet. They all thought they could believe, but no one had the radical faith to believe that he could actually do it and that they would uh, partake in that as well. Eventually, a man, and boy, he must have been crazy. He said, I'll do it. And Blondine wheeled him across the Niagara on the tightrope in a wheelbarrow and back again. Only they all had faith in Blondine, but only one had radical, radical faith. And so as we finish our message today, God is calling us, I believe, the church to be people of radical faith again. Not just little faith, not just faith that will get us by, but radical faith that will see things done for the kingdom of God. You all know my favourite preacher and his grandmother said to him one day, she said, Jimmy, eh, God is a big God. Don't ask him small things. Ask him for big things because he's a great big God. That preacher went on to preach to millions around the world, see people saved, healed and baptised in the Holy Ghost. Listen, God is a great big God. Uh, let's have radical faith. Let's be like the centurion uh, who had radical faith, not just to go along with what the normal was, just to bring Jesus to the home and watch Jesus heal this little boy. Uh, but no, he believed there and then that when Jesus spoke the word, that it was done. When we ask something in faith that we know is in God's will, do we have the radical faith to believe that when we ask it, it's done. There's a wee challenge for us. Let's pray. Lord, increase our faith. Lord, so often we bemoan our lack of faith. We're human. But Lord, we pray that as we read about the centurion during this week, Lord, that you will energize us, that you would let that faith rise and that we would be different uh, people at the end of this week. Lord, that we would dare to believe you for great things. Lord, as Satan doesn't want a church that has got radical faith. He wants the church to have a passive faith that will just get by. But Lord, when we think of the David Livingstons, when we think of all the great men and women who had radical faith and saw great things done for the kingdom, Lord, there was nothing special about them. They were not superhuman. They were just like us. And Lord, we can have that same faith. It's the Holy Spirit who gives the gift of faith. Holy Spirit, increase our faith, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. And we trust you'll join us again tomorrow. God willing, thank you.